Hey guys, this episode is brought to you by Sinusoid Cables. Uh, if you're in the market for a new instrument cable, we're looking for something that's going to last you a long, long time, like a hundred years. A hundred years? Check out sinusoid.com with their hundred year warranty and custom cable building program. You can get the cable you want and it will last for a hundred years. If you're looking for a cable that sucks, don't buy from Sinusoid. Buy it from someone else. <laughs> Hey, this is Ryan. And this is Steve, and you're listening to Sticky Cycle Hum, the guitar buying, selling, trading, modding, fixing, breaking, reviewing, playing podcast. I think you went a little out of order there, but... Yeah, I, I left one out. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Oh, well. Whatever. You'll get it next time, Steve. Oh, well. <laughs> We're not perfectionists around here. How are you doing, man? Good. How, yeah. uh, anything new happened since the last time we recorded? I'm going to say yes, mm -hmm. just to keep the bit going. Okay. Uh, I bought a Zvex Fuzz Factory off oh, of Craigslist. Oh, nice. Um, it's uh, one of the old school style hand painted ones. It's actually from, I got the 10th anniversary. Should we grab it? it? We probably should. Um, you keep talking. I'll grab it. Yeah. Uh, it's the from the hand painted series. So, and I, it was on our local Craigslist for like 100 bucks. Super stoked on it. One, because. Uh, We've been talking about setting up a lot, some work with Zvex, uh, so it's kind of like got me back on that Zvex train. Well, we have some fun stuff coming up. It's not work; it's, we're doing like some fun well, partnership stuff yeah. with Zvex coming up very soon. Look at that guy right there! It's I mean, it's totally not going to show up. It's going to disappear thanks to the green screen. But you got to you got to hold it in front of yourself. My green in front of my green shirt. <laughs> it's going to be so far away; no one's going to be able I to know. see it. But uh, yeah, it's the hand painted uh, Fuzz Factory. V43, whatever that means in terms of their uh I really dig that numbers. you have this, man. Yeah. Uh, I remember when you had the uh, fuzz probe. Yeah. That thing was a ton of fun, but you know this, of course, is smaller. 112905 is the date on it. Yep. Old school, man. Good job. Good score. Yeah, very excited about that. Uh, looking forward to throwing that on my board and messing around with it. Actually, you know what? I already took the Velcro off of it because I wanted to see the signatures and everything on the bottom. So uh -huh. I'm not actually sure. Uh, I'll figure out a way to play it, but I don't know if I'm going to put it on my board per se. I might just like... Put it in a museum, Steve. Put it in a museum. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. You got anything new going? Uh, I bought a ukulele. Oh, yeah. Because I play ukulele so much. Uh, and I, I saw these things. As, Wait, hold on. Do you? I do, actually. Every now and then I play ukulele. Okay. I've been playing ukulele a lot to uh, play lullabies to put my kid to sleep. And I keep one hanging by my desk in my office for when I Why want to. Why is this beer warm? I don't know. Because it's super hot lately and just the weather sucked it out of there. It was in the fridge when you got it, right? It was. I don't know what to tell you. Good but, thing Firestone Walker is great. <laughs> and it tastes okay when it's a little warm. But uh, yeah, I saw these at Summer Nam. It's the Macala Waterman by Kala Ukuleles. It was made completely out of plastic. It just arrived today in the mail. Have you tried putting water in it yet? I haven't yet, but I'm there's going to. There's a crack to. in the side, dude. Where? You put that there? No, there's a thread. There's a piece of... Oh, there's a thread inside? You see that thread floating Oh, around? weird. It's like a piece of like little twine thread or something <laughs> like that. I noticed that earlier. There's no crack in it. Okay. Uh, but yeah, these things are only 50 bucks. So I figured I might as well take a risk on it. I've always had a fantasy of taking a musical instrument out with me when I go surfing. Yeah. So I'll figure out some way to take this out with me on a small day when I won't lose it. It's bright orange. I know that there, I bet it's going to float really good. I know that there is a conversation going that at Winter Nam. You were going to make a video with Josh Scott from JHS. Well, I pitched it to two people And now. Colt Westbrook. I pitched it to Colt, too. Oh, I, thought you, I thought just all three of you were going to do it. Hey, that would be great. I would do that with both of them. <laughs> but I'd take them out surfing for a pedal launch for like a drippy reverb or something like that. But let's see, let's see how it sounds. Plastic ukulele. <laughs> it's in tune so far so good it took me a long time to get this thing in tune today uh, it showed up with the strings completely like slack on it Oh, okay and so i spent a lot of time tuning it up 
Um, I'm not convinced the tuners are great on it yet. It seems like it slips out of tune pretty easily. You know, the I we have a novelty ukulele, uh-huh. and so it's got banjo tuners on it. Like, just awful. Yeah, yeah. Awful you have one of those guitar. ones it's all that novelty. is not a real instrument. This is a real instrument. My kids like if it. If I can get it to stay in tune. Right. Uh, it's in tune right now. It holds it for a little bit. I don't know if I need to, like, tighten down the tuning pegs. Or you know what? Maybe if I get them nice and crusty and rusty, they'll they'll hold there tune. You, go. you know, and get them out in the ocean, and and that'll get it conditioned. You know, uh, but yeah, I'm excited. I think it's a fun little thing. My kid was attracted to it the moment he saw it. He's like, Ah, Daddy, let me play the little guitar. Mm-hmm. And for fifty bucks, I don't feel like I made a mistake here. I'm happy to have it around. It's really interesting. These plastic ukuleles. This isn't the only plastic ukulele concept out there. There's a, a different company, I think, called um, shoot, I forget forget what they're called, but they would make these ones that were like all kinds of different crazy shapes. Oh, I was thinking of that the company that was making the pineapple shaped ones. It might be them, oh. but uh, they have they also a, had a, like a plastic violin. Yeah, yeah, it's that company, but I can't remember their called? name. I don't know. Ah, shoot, that's going to haunt me. But anyways, they have plastic fretboards on their ukuleles too, and it works very well because it's plastic strings. Yeah. It's not a big deal. Well, and I mean, I'm sure there are people out there who are really picky about their ukulele tone, but I think most people just get them for like camp, as campfire instruments, as beater instruments. Like unless you're recording with them, I, I mean, they're such a small, like... Just hearing this one, I feel like this, again, it's kind of novelty because it's plastic, but I feel like at least as far as the sound goes, it's... It's not sound- bad, right? It's, well, I feel like it sounds the same as the one that my wife bought in a oh, sure. in a tourist shop in Hawaii that's made out of wood. That one just lacks all of the other f- features like frets in the right place. <laughs> um, and the tuning. And the tuning and all that. But it, as far as tone goes, like I, I guess I don't really... I guess I've just never been in a situation where I heard a ukulele and I was like, oh man. That's a good sounding one. That's the tone. That's you know, the tone. Like, Welcome to the tone zone. They're, you know, they're plucky little things. Right. They're not meant to have, you know, piano sustain or anything like that. I mean, I feel like this does sound like a plastic instrument. Right. But it works for it. Yeah. It completely works for it. And I, it's bright freaking orange. I love it. What other colors are there? Oh, man. They have all sorts of colors. Just all sorts. They, have like, they have like eight different transparent colors. What was your second choice for Probably for the color. fully clear. Just clear, clear? Yeah. Like and white. they have like blues and seafoam greens okay. and purples and pink and stuff. And then they have plastic ones that are opaque. Maybe I just need to get one for my kids to beat on. 50 bucks. 50 right? bucks, man. And they have ones in all, like I said, all sorts of different colors. But then we can have a, a concert. Yeah, a totally. Po- podcast concert. Ukulele. Podcast concert with ukulele. I'll have to learn how to play ukulele, which I learned this past week that it's just the four strings on a guitar. It's the bottom four strings uh, if you put a capo on the fifth fret. Right. But the top string is an octave, an octave up. Abu- octave up, yeah. It's an, right, yeah. So it, but it's it, like all the forms are the same. Exactly. Exactly. If you can do the math in your head of like, oh, what would a D shape be on the fifth fret of a guitar? Yeah. You've got it figured out. Yeah. You know, you've, you've cracked the code. They're super easy to jump onto if you play guitar. Yeah, my friends and I, we've cracked the code. <laughs> All right. Do we want to jump right into it? Yeah. This first ad was sent by Tim Hemingway uh, from KSL.com, uh, the Utah news website uh-huh. slash classified. Which is still ad. weird to me that their main classified thing is through a news station. Yeah. Uh, this is a Tacoma DM8C Road King acoustic electric guitar with case. They're asking $500. And the comment on it is artwork is just a ballpoint pen and could easily be sanded off. I don't believe it for a minute. <laughs> if you were like really light with a ballpoint pen, maybe if like, you've ever drawn like feathering. on if you've ever drawn on wood with a ballpoint pen, you know that this was like carved into this guitar. You could do it really light. It wouldn't stick. Real, like real. There's light. no way this person did the art really, really light. light. There's some kind of like drawing of like an angel type character on here with some other like flourishes around the edge of the guitar. Right. 
and it doesn't look awful, but it looks like something a high schooler did. Yeah, like a talent, like the most talented high schooler in that particular school right, did this. Right. But it's still like not great. The most talented high schooler in this school ruined this guitar. <laughs> exactly. Uh, as far as sanding it goes, m- yeah, maybe the right like guitar ca- tech could save this for you. I think the thing to do would be to continue to add to the art piece and just try to cover the entire top with pen. Here's the rough thing. <laughs> That's a bad idea too. Here's the rough thing. Uh, one of the I found one that sold on Reaver for four hundred dollars. Ooh, no case with that one. That is rough. But still, uh, here's another one that sold on Reaver. I used to really like these guitars. Five hundred plus shipping. So what do you, what do you what would you pay for this defiled Tacoma? I'm gonna I say know, right man. now two twenty five. We that's what we said last episode. My first thought was one seventy five, but then honestly, it's probably closer to a half price deal here, like two fifty ish. It's two hundred. It's, it's tough because it is a Tacoma, and Tacoma does make a really good acoustic guitar. Or when I was or shopping, rather they did. When I was shopping for acoustic guitars, like. Two decades ago, I remember being really excited about Tacoma guitars. Um, I always, I always thought the their sound hole positioning gave them a unique look. They sounded good. Mm-hmm. You're right. Like this could be sanded out, but you're gonna have to do a lot of work. It's gonna look really rough. You're gonna end I up mean, with I a guess, Willie Nelson guitar. Yeah, they. I mean, I guess this these guitars were like natural finish or like a satin finish. That's anyway. the trick. That's what you do. You take it to a tech. You have them. You say, get rid of this art. But get make it look like the art, where make it look like it's relict as the excuse for why it looks the way it does after you get rid of the art. Right. right. Like really rough it up. But by the time you're done there, like you could have just bought a clean one. Right. Well, that, I mean that's a problem, right? Yeah. This is why you don't. If you it's it's if you know that it's going to be part of your stage show, part of your persona part of a guitar that you know you're going to keep forever but you like this art me personally look at it oh no i was going to get to that a bit ah oh. uh, okay uh then go ahead and put art on your guitar i can't tell you not put art not to put art on your guitar but never do it if you think you're going to ever sell the guitar because it just is going to ruin the value right well unless they- you happen to be an actual famous artist or musician it's going to ruin the art of the guitar. Yeah. Uh, what Steve wanted me to talk about is that this follows my rules of art on guitars. If it's for display or for playing, the art is aligned so that it displays when the guitar is being worn and played because it's horizontal to the body. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of being vertical to the body. So that's what Steve got all excited about for a minute. So much excite. <laughs> Steve had big feelings about it. <laughs> Do we want to say anything more about this? I don't know. I like Tacomas. If you have a chance to get one on the cheap, definitely try it out if you're looking yeah. for an acoustic guitar. I always liked the look, like the big, not having the sound hole in a normal place made you feel like you had this great big piece of blank wood underneath you. Mm-hmm. And then the pit guard is like this clear plastic piece. It's really thin. Yeah. So it's like you don't even see it there. It's kind of a neat look. I'm, I'm always surprised that they didn't take off. As greatly they were, as, they as were, other yeah, acoustics. Yeah, they were kind of like up and down, up and down, and then uh, I think they just, they don't exist anymore, right? I don't know. I know they are they like became part of Fender, and I think oh, really? Fender ceased production on them. Huh. That's too bad. I think they're cool. I even like the weird sound hole. I feel like I'd, I'd be less likely to drop a pick in there. Yeah, probably. If you dropped a pick in there, you're way far from home. <laughs> yeah what are you doing up there yeah. get out get away from the hole all right let's uh let's tackle this topic which might be a little bit tmi <laughs> I, I pitched it to steve and he said let's roll with it enthusiastically he's like i want to do it let's talk about this no he didn't steve is pensive about the whole thing i have this wart i don't think been, pensive is the right word i i have this wart that's been developing on my index finger yeah and have I tried, used have you tried to knife it? I used to get warts all the time when I was a kid, like a young teenager. Because you were always touching frogs. I was touching them frogs. Uh, 
And I would go and get treatments for them. They'd get them frozen off and they just grow back. I ended up having to get them all lasered off. Right. And Pew-pew. it left scars, which was ridiculous to me because the whole time I'm getting them frozen off, the doctors are like, don't cut them off. Don't like try to burn them out because you'll just have scars. Right. And then like to get rid of them, they had to give me scars with a laser, with a freaking laser. Was there at so least a shark? I swore from that point on that if I ever got a ward again, I would just burn it out myself with a hot soldering iron. Yeah. But the problem is that this isn't a place where if I do that, I won't be able to play guitar for like a week and a half. Do you think, because it's kind of on the side of your index it's finger. It's a pressure thing, like that pressure right oh, there. Okay. I'd probably be able to work around it, but I'm worried that it'll like take you me out of commission. You play chords anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I play bar chords and stuff. All right, all right. Steve doesn't you think say I play so. chords. Steve says I'm not a chord boy. Uh. <laughs> now you're going to re- make a whole video where all you play are chords. Your next demo will just be chords. I do put a lot of chords in like hey, pedal demos and hey stuff. Hey, mom, look at all these chords. <laughs> Wait, are we talking about cables now? Sinusoid.com. <laughs> So what do you think I should do, Steve? Do you think I should go to the doctor or do you think I should try to take it out myself? It's kind of gotten big now. But a soldering iron would take that out super easy. <laughs> yeah, I guess. How it's would, about like pencil lead thickness. When you, uh, when you get it lasered, do they give you any kind of local? Yeah, but I had that done like 20 years ago. I'm, I'm sure they do it differently now. I'm sure they would still make me freeze it off, which hurts two by the way and that takes like a week and a half to heal you thought about duct tape i've read up on that and when you when you read like oh if you just put duct tape on it it'll go away it makes it sound so simple you read the actual process and it's like this long it's like six process. weeks and you have to do all the stuff like but the success rate is actually the same as freezing it yeah but when i read freezing takes an afternoon and then it's just all healing it's six weeks of hell with the duct tape thing. Is it hell? So- it's just so- duct tape. Soldering iron will be 10 seconds of burning heat and then a week of agony. <sighs> I don't know, man. The you think I- the soldering iron is a bad idea? The idea of putting a freaking soldering iron on my hand on purpose. Well, what if I strap my finger down and you come over and do it for me and I'll just drink a bunch of tequila and you just lay into it? Hey, Ryan, I've got this business idea for you. (laughs) All right. Now, here's how it works. We make a YouTube channel. (laughs) You know, if I did put that on YouTube, there's the the pimple poppers out there that love that stuff. Oh, my gosh. How would we do this? I don't know. Would we put it on our own channel or would I put it on a different YouTube channel? You got to put it on a... I'll, I'll put it on my personal YouTube channel. Oh my I'll be down for that. It'll be the only public video on my personal YouTube <laughs> channel. <laughs> right in between all your marital aid videos that you and your wife make, right? What? You're saying that you don't have any public videos on your YouTube. No, because the rest of them were like of my kids, so they're all oh, okay. they're all like unlisted. Gotcha. That's a different oh, kind of video. Oh, you know what? The YouTube, the, my, the, your favorite band videos, I think, are still public on my channel. Oh, Nice. Yeah. I always forget that those are out After there. After like 10 years, I think the most viewed one has like 90 views. <laughs> That's about right. Uh, Kick Tricks is on that channel too. Yeah, It's yeah. actually got a good number. It's over a thousand. Whoa. I think. Anytime someone, like an old fan comes out of the past and is like, you guys need to do a reunion show. We're like, <laughs> yeah, no way, dude. We're not going to play a show for three people. <laughs> I'm, I'm down anytime you want to go. Could- you know, I can't say no to anything, so you know I'll be there. I just can't commit to practice is all. <laughs> We're going to practice here, man. Oh, man. Okay. All right, you've convinced me. Uh, so, yeah. Warts on hands. Have you ever had warts, Steve? Um... I'm going to say no. I don't think I've had warts ever that, inter- that interfered with my guitar playing. So this is a new thing for me. Um, I've had, I mean, maybe I haven't had, I haven't had anything on my skin that I haven't been able to just dig out. Yeah. I will say that. I should have dug this out super early, um, but I, I, even, chickened, I chickened out. I, I was trying to dig it out with a razor and I chickened out. Uh, I even uh, tore off my own, um, Whoa. Skin tag. Okay. Uh, not too long ago. 
a few months ago. That thing bled like crazy for a while. Yeah, I had a skin tag in my armpit. This is gross stuff. This is a gross episode. <laughs> I had a skin tag in my armpit, and I went to the doctor. And I was like, can I just clip this out, or do you, like, you guys need to take care of it? And they at first were like, oh, you can probably clip it out. And then they looked at it and like, no, that's got blood pumping through it. You should let us freeze that off. Yeah. <laughs> it was a big boy. No, this wasn't too big. That's why I took care of it. But as soon as I saw it, I was like, I, was like, I got to nip this in the bud. Yeah. Skin tags, man. Skin tags and warts. Last time I had like a skin thing that kept me from playing guitar, it was that Poison Oak, which was, oh, which was hell. Yeah, that was bad. It was really bad. You should have done some video, started video <laughs> YouTube when you were all poison doked up. I came over here. So this guy... Uh, you know, he's, uh, I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised you're not wearing a tank top as hot as it is. It's pretty dang. It, well, it's so hot that anything I wear is just immediately yeah. soaked right now. But, but you kind of wear tank tops all the time. And we, so we come over here but to the, record. The, my, my point was that. And you're wearing like a long sleeve. Yeah. And it was like, it was, it was warm. It wasn't warm. It wasn't like hot, but it was. It was not cold. It was seasonal. It was spring. So it wasn't by cool by any means. I was in a t-shirt, and I was like, what in the world? Yeah, I was trying to cover up to save you from having to see my disgusting deformity. And I think I was wrapped up in those calamine strips, too. Yeah. That was bad stuff. That lasted like a month. Yeah. Um, I The only, like, real guitar playing in- injuries, I guess, that are, like, wounds, though they were actually related to playing, was I used to get really bad calluses. I still would if I was playing when we were in your favorite band. Sure, sure. Um, and the thing is that, like, I never, or I say calluses, I used to get bl- really bad blisters, yeah. and they wouldn't callus. So, so weird. we were, like, kind of limited to, I mean, we never tried to overbook, so we usually didn't play more than, like, once or twice two a or month. three shows a month. Yeah. I think there were a few, every once in a while, we'd play, like, four shows in a month. But we could never... D- we can never do like we d- we did it, but it was we never. We did it, guys. We did we it. We did it. We definitely did it. But it was never comfortable to do like a Friday Saturday. No, absolutely deal. not. There were definitely times that we did. I it. would be too wrecked for a Friday uh, Saturday. Or if we would, there, I maybe one time we did like a Tuesday Saturday something like that. Um, but we would like play a show and the thing is like i would and pick, adam would split his hands yeah. open playing drums there'd playing be drums. blood all over everything so yeah i would get like real on both uh my fretting hand and my my plucking hand both hands uh-huh uh, um i would get blisters and it was yeah it was pretty awful let's change the subject yeah. <laughs> this has been the grossest episode we've ever done that's probably uh, not true no, and that's probably not true at all. So Matt Chittum, is that how you say his name? Sure. Sent us this ad uh, from Reverb.com. I'm wearing the shirt right now. Uh, for a Paul Reed hey, Smith. Hey, one more time. What shirt are you wearing? A Reverb.com shirt that I got at Summer NAM. I had to beg them for it. Really? Yeah. I've been to, what, four NAMs now? Every time I go to the Reverb booth, I'm like, can I have a shirt? And they're like, oh, we're all out. Or like they act like, oh, we're saving these for special people. It's because you got to sign up. Every time, every time they only, they're like, oh, we only give shirts to people who sign up. What? I'm already signed up. Yeah. And you're like, I'm a super seller, bro. I'm a super seller. And I'm like, my show covers your site all the freaking time. So I was talking to the guys like, I've never gotten a shirt yet. I sell all this stuff through you. I have a podcast that talks about you all the time. Can I please have a shirt? And he's like, come back tomorrow. First thing in the morning. Oh we'll, my God. We'll have your size. So I finally got a reverb shirt. Uh, so anyways, we've got this ad here from Matt Chittum. Paul Reed Smith Santana, pre-production 1979, Cherry Sunburst. Yep. What do you think of this guitar, Steve? First reactions. Why does it the P, mm, why does it have P90s? Why not, Steve? Zoom in on them. You'll see that the P90s have a wood cover on them. Yeah, that doesn't make it any better. You don't like the P90s, huh? I there's just something about the way the color sits across against the sunburst, like is. A they little do kind of look like big fudge sickles. Yeah. <laughs> or poops. I I like the pickups. I'm just fine with them. I think I like this PRS more than any PRS I've ever seen. 
I really dig it, even though it's a hundred thousand dollars, which who knows if it'll ever yeah. sell for that. Well, you know, uh, he says, own a piece of history. This guitar was hand built by Paul Reed Smith for me, John Mann. I co designed and manufactured the original trim for PRS with Paul Smith. He drops the reed there. I thought that was interesting. Yeah, good old Paul Smith. Good old Paul Smith. This is one of the very first guitars Paul built. It's the first one piece top ever, the first sunburst ever. So, I mean, I guess like if all these things he's claiming are true, that it is the first one piece top and the first sunburst, then maybe if you're a big time PRS person, yeah, this might be worth it. I guess. Here's what I here's my piece on it. I'm not even going to address the price because that's purely speculative. That price, like right. you have to find the right buyer, you have to be in the right auction uh, for it to sell for that. Like, I think this person's just trying to set precedence for the price of this thing. I really like the look of this guitar. Have you noticed? Did you notice the inlays? Uh, no, there's a single inlay, just one bird at the 12th fret. I think it looks so classy. If PRS put out a reissue of this with, you know, like, um, a more normal looking pickup setup on it. Right. But this like aged, like cherry sunburst with the single knob and two switches. I love it. I'm, I really like this PRS. I think it's a good look. It's, it's, uh. It's pretty cool. You know what I just realized in videos that we that I do all the time? I just did it. What did you do, Steve? I yawned. Oh, well, because this is boring. <laughs> this is a boring show. That's why I yawn. Actually, uh, they say that yawning, you, you yawn because your brain is trying to uh, catch up and actually pay attention. Oh, you're, yeah. You're hearing, what, I'm you're sure hearing, exa- that's exactly what it was. You're hearing something interesting. Um. Yeah, yeah, we'll go with that. Um, <laughs> also, there's no logo on the headstock. I did notice that. And the headstock's th- a different shape. It's a different shape than what PRS shapes are now. I don't, and I, I don't feel know like the enough whole thing. About, I don't know enough about historical PRS to know if that's uh, like how they used to be. Yeah, me either. I don't think I've ever seen a PRS this old. I feel like the body shape is a little different too. Like the waist is more narrow. Yeah, and the horns are a little different. I'm just. I like it. I don't know why I like this so much. It's not my usual style. It really isn't. I think it's just that cherry burst. Mm. I've never been a big fan of cherry, but that's, I suppose, not more of a really. grape guy, huh? I'm, uh, I'm more of a, yes, Ryan, I'm more <laughs> of a grape guy. <laughs> no, I always thought the cherry burst was a little too bright. I like bright though. Uh, I'm. I. That's why I always like the uh, the sun. The tobaccos. Tobaccos are like a three yeah. tone. Tobacco is really classy. I like two tone bursts, like a Fender two tone, mm. going from that like dark to the yellow. Yeah, that's a nice. No, look. I need that transitional in my life. I need that red. You want that red in the middle, huh? I need that little little bit of red before I get to the yellow. <laughs> it sounds like we're talking about something kind of saucy right now, but I have no idea what it would be. All right, time for me to go reset that camera. I'll be right back. All right. You transition uh, into the next, next thing. thing uh, we're going to hit the next topic. Today, uh, a, couple weeks ago. a couple weeks ago, that's true, when we recorded a week and a half ago, uh, HPI42, HP42, the YouTuber, okay. uh, demo guy, uh, announced GitCon 2107. Can we talk about his YouTube channel name real quick? Because you just call them H Pi. Yeah, and it's H P. It is not spelled anywhere near that. It is oh spelled E Y T S C H P I 42. I did not realize until today when Steve spelled it out for me that that is supposed to pronounce H P 42. It's like a really crazy spelling yeah. of the sound that H we'll makes. Put a, I'll put a link to the video we're talking about in the, uh, in the comments. Oh, links don't transfer to YouTube from Podbean. You have to go in and do them Are you going to do this manually anyway, since you're going to have to edit the video? Uh, you go and put in the links in for me. How about that? All, I, I think I might be able to copy-paste. You can copy-paste all the, the text, but you have to go redo the no, links. I can copy-paste the... Uh, I think I can copy-paste the source code. Okay, we'll do that. See, I'll see if it converts. Okay. Wow, boring logistical stuff. Back Hooray. in. Yay. All right, so this got announced. It's GitCon 2107, actually 2017. Um, 
twenty one oh seven. Holy hell, Steve! Did you see it? What? That is twenty one oh seven. That's the way it was sparse. It's been it's been corrected. Um. Anyway, uh, HP forty two is hosting at the Framus and Warwick factory. How do it pronounce Framus? Framus. Framus. I don't know. Framus. I said Framus. From us. From us. Uh, anyway, at their factory in Germany, they're hosting a convention event, but it's all going to be gear YouTubers. And I wasn't invited. Bye, Ryan. Um, so it's actually, uh, it sounds pretty exciting. I think they have like that pedal, the pedal show, um, the pedals and pedals. Problem is I don't know the names off hands. I know the Sean guys. Pierce Johnson's going to be Sean there. Sean Pierce Johnson. Gear Man Dude's going to be there. Gear Man Dude. Um, the the Phil adventure, McKnight's going to the be Adventures there. Adventures of Guitar Girl. Phil McKnight. Um, that pedal show. The pedals. What's the What's the one that Juan Aldrete does? Aldrete. Oh, I can't remember. Uh, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. They did the hundred pedal chain. Yeah. I st- I, I want. There's tons and tons of like. Guitar YouTube personalities are going to be there. It sounds crazy. Yeah, it sounds really wild. Uh, the um, thing, the thing, it sounds I, pretty exciting. It sounds exciting, but the thing I wonder is because the, the idea is that they're going to be producing content nonstop there. Yeah, yeah. hundreds of videos is what. That's what they keep saying. What what they're claiming is that there's going to be hundreds of videos. How many coming days out of this. is it? I don't know, man, but you get all that, you get that many YouTubers together in the same room. They're just going to be creating content like crazy. Yeah. Uh, my question is as a YouTuber, mm-hmm. as a gear review guy, are you asking yourself this question since yes. I don't really jump? Like, I'm thinking, like, if I was invited and I went, right, will I be able to get content that our audience likes? Like, because our audience, so. our audience likes content that's. Re- that's gear related, not gear reviewer related, if that makes sense. Like I always felt like when we've done interviews uh, and like cross podcasts with other podcasts, it gets a little boring after a while. Cause it's just like, Oh, here's a couple guys talking about podcasting. Right. Uh, to an extent. But I, but I mean, you know, some of the things that I would imagine is like, there, it's not just gonna be like, oh, hey, uh, so what camera do you use to make your videos? You know, it's sure. The, like, I know uh, Henning was saying, like, oh yeah, I'm gonna have my whole rig there. Like, so it's like the idea is that all of these different YouTubers are gonna bring like their personal rig with them, right? And then they're gonna be like, oh, that's the pedal you use. Like, oh, let me see. What, like, so the I guess the idea would be like, if you went, you would have, you'd be like, hey, Gearman, dude. What do you think about the Nocturne Brain Fez? Right. What do you think about the 50-50? Right. You know? So we would be talking about our own personal gear with each other. That would be, like, one of the things that would happen. Like, kind I of. Guess. Or, you know, like, how about... Uh, I know one of the videos that HP did um, was a video with... Um, who was it? Uh, uh, I should know what the guy's name is. I saw it. Um, I want to say his first name is Brad. Anyway... Um, where Brad it was like, anyway is a very strange know, name. Where they went to uh, Tho- is it Thoman Toman? It's a it's the European. So basically, you know, we have a guitar center, Sam Ash okay. here. They've got Andertons and Gak in the UK, right? And then this Thoman or Toman or whatever is the big one in Germany. Hmm. They're like the mainland, the big mainland Europe guitar gotcha. store. Um, so they go there and they have like a 500 euro challenge. So like you could do that kind of stuff where it's like, you know, it'd be like you sitting down with Dan and Mick from sure. the pedal, that pedal show, the pedal show. You think What's they would called? sit down with me, Steve? No, but you know, hypothetically, uh, you'd sit down with these guys and be like, all right, you got a thousand dollar budget. What do you get? You know, well, do I have to convert it into pounds or whatever they use? Well, I'm pretty sure those guys are American, so. I guess I, I guess that's true. Are they? I, I really have I no know. idea. Neither do I. Um, so, so those are the kinds of things um, that you know that would would be beyond demo content. You know, um, it would be maybe like 
you sit down a panel. You got like five or six of you guys. No, I'm yawning too. And because uh, <laughs> I'm so excited, this is riveting. And uh, and you're like, what's your favorite pedal? And everybody just goes up there and talks about their favorite pedal. And then everybody has to play somebody else's favorite pedal. You're coming up with all sorts of content for this show that we don't even know. So if this hopefully, will happen. hopefully HP uh, watches this uh, podcast and gets some <laughs> good ideas for it. No, I, I think they should. I'm saying do. like these are the kinds of things that that they're capable of. They're also going to have. They're saying that they're going to have a bunch of manufacturers. Yeah, spot. that's so, always fun. So Framus, Fram, Framus, Framus, uh, is and Warwick, who are the same company, are hosting the event. But they're going to have like a bunch of companies sh- there showcasing. So it's also going to be like a miniature know, name. Five of these guys sitting down. Hey, Gearman, dude. Here's the new Ibanez Prestige model. What do you think? And he's going to play some blues, and then they're going to hand it to Steve Vai. He's going to be like, I don't know. That did sound like Steve Vai. I thought he was in the room for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that I mean, those are some of the things. Like the companies that are also going to be like displaying, they're like bringing gear for these people to try out. Like think about you can think about it that way, right? Yeah. So, Earth, say a company like Earthquaker or. Keely or whoever, instead of having to send like 10 pedals to 10 different channels for review, plus, you know, whatever the costs of that are in terms of marketing and everything else, um, they would just send Robert with the pedal that he wants to promote mm. to this event as a, uh, man, like as a corporate sponsor, basically. And he would just be like, hey, everybody, demo my pedal. And they would just do it theoretically because they're just there and they, they're they generating the content. And then you don't have to pay anybody. <laughs> you make it sound I so know. simple. I don't know. I just imagine. It's not simple. I, honestly, like I was very skeptical when I first saw this. And the more I thought about it, I was like, I could think of some like pretty yeah. cool things here. I guess we'll have to see what kind of content comes out of it. I just imagine it being a big party, which would be fun to be there. But I have a trouble because I have trouble getting it together to get content made at Nam. Like it's hard right. with all the people around, everything happening all at once. It's hard to make content. But that, but that, I mean, that's the flip side of it too. Is that this is designed specifically for these people? So yeah, that's I guess kind so. of, I guess, one of the negatives that a lot of people are saying with this is that this is a private event. That um, I mean, if you made, oh, sorry, you got me yawning now. If you made it public, it would just. It would get swamped, right? There, there'd just be like people there. I, I was thinking that it would be cool for for one of because the, they're talking about doing panels and uh, live streaming content, mm-hmm. so people would be like watching it a YouTube live feed and uh, submitting their questions and whatever. But I thought it would be cool for that to get like a small, like a hundred, two hundred, three hundred person auditorium, and just advertising that event. You know, kind of like a live podcast. Mm, yeah. Um, excuse me, sort of situation. Um, but you know, this is a planned event for these people who are YouTubers. So, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to compare it to Nam in the sense that like, when you go to, when like you or I, we go to any booth at Nam. you know, the guys that we know will take time to be like, Oh, Hey, what's up? The people that we don't know are going to be like, oh, what retailer do you represent? Right, you right. Know? Even the people we do know, like, we have to be respectful of their time and be like, hey, yeah. do you have some time? Because I know, like, really, you guys are here to wheel uh, and deal. To wheel and deal. Like, you're not here to make videos. You're here to wheel and deal. But the purpose of this event is specifically to make content. Yeah, that's like, true. So they're already, like, before the in the video, uh, again, H, HP, he says, like, We've been that this was an idea he came up with two years ago. So he's been like in his mind, in the back of his head, like generating content for this show. He's a creative guy and he's kind of like, kind of a nut. I don't I coming up with don't doubt that he's got yeah, all sorts of coming stuff. Coming up planned. with ideas. And then and then once they opened it up and he, you know, he says he's spent a lot of time on the phone, email, whatever, like contacting people who would do this. I'm sure he's like, Hey, here's this idea I had. What do you think? And some of those people have been like Oh, this is a lot of fun. Have you thought about doing X, Y, Z thing? I think that could be really cool too. So check this out, right? Uh, The pedals and pedal. Gosh. 
carry pedals this, and effects. Carry the carry the show for thirty seconds. Here I am holding the show. Oh, I hate you. I'm holding the show up for thirty seconds while Steve looks something up on his phone. Uh, he's looking up a YouTube channel. Problem is, I spelled something. pedals and effects arena corner over here. <sighs> it is pedals and effects. Yeah. Why could I not? Why am I? Why could I not think of that? I don't They're know. called pedals and effects. So they did the hundred. The hundred pedal thing. Now you're going to put all of these guys in the same room, right? So Juan brings his hundred pedal board, and then you know all of these. Everyone else brings their hundred pedal. Like everybody's like all these guys could probably easily bring like at least like twenty, thirty pedal boards. Yeah, right. So you get you know ten of these guys together. You hook all your pedal boards up. Seven hundred pedal board. That would be fun. You know what I would Maybe. like to do at one of these things? Feedback contest. Feedback contest. Who can get the best feedback? Who can get it the quickest? And who can keep it going the longest? Brian Setzer. Brian Setzer and Brian Setzer. They, he'd win the feedback contest? All, all Those three. Those big hollow bodies? All three. All three. <laughs> all it, like I said, like when I first watched the video, I was like, oh, I don't know. And I still think there are some things that Personally, maybe I think would work better, like the having some sort of live audience for at least certain things. But I mean, hey, like it's it's kind of a cool idea. It's kind of like yeah, it's, I, I I'm really interested to see how it pans out and to see what kind of content yeah. they get. And uh, after it's done, I'll let you know if I'm sad that I didn't get invited, or if I'm happy that I didn't get invited. Damn. <laughs> It was, seems like it would be a big thing to do, like to travel to Europe, right? To travel to Germany for a thing. Like I just got burned out going to, to Nam and Nashville, which right. is but realistically it, but, six but again, hours away. You know, what is Germany like? like Fourteen a lot hours of, away. A lot of this stuff is. I gotta like, go international. Hypothetically, like a lot of this stuff is already planned out for you, so there. It's not. Even, it's going to be like, oh, hey, you want to do. Yeah. This thing with these other guys at three o'clock. Just be here with your gear. That's true. You know, you're not hunting people down, going like, "Oh, hey man, uh, we're gonna go get some hot chicken later. Uh, you got some time? You got some time to eat some?" Well, hot that's chicken? the other thing. If I go to Germany, I want to go on a little bit of a food vacation too. Well, you know, can't help you though. Go that. get some beer. Get some brats. German beer is different. Schnitzel. German beer. Everyone I've known who from San Diego who's gone to Germany is like, "Yeah, it's different." But they're not saying different bad. No, it's different good, but it's like there's a reason that those, you know, you see, there's a reason the German stereotype is like, oh, they drink a Stein every day. It's because their beer is 3%. I'm down with that. So it's like, yeah, you drink a Stein because you have to. You don't have to, you get to. <laughs> Depending on how you look at it. It's really good beer. It's just like if you want to get hit quick, that doesn't exist. Yeah. Let's hit the uh, the last ad and then get the heck out of here. I'm yeah, ready to this go to was, bed, uh, Steve. sent by you. This is a Fender Stratocaster made in Mexico. Entire setup for any player, $575. Excellent condition. Only used a few times. Entire electric guitar setup. Cream colored Fender Stratocaster. MIM guitar with no dings or chips or blemishes. Two interchangeable maple necks. One with rosewood. One with maple fingerboard. Uh, two interchangeable pickups and pick guards and knobs. Uh, one standard, brighter sound, and one noiseless for warmer tone. One padded gig bag. One nice leather strap. One crate amp. Total value, $1,050. Oh. This setup is great for a skilled player who wants the ability to, to play with great guitar that will last forever and try out different sounds. Or for the beginner that will have everything needed to start playing immediately in one stop at great price and close to new condition. Five hundred Again, $575. I mean, the ideal, like, well, here's a, here's a trick. Like, this guy did something that I think a lot of us have thought about doing, but never actually did it. The maple instead of, doesn't have tuners on it. Yeah, that's, that's the problem. But he, instead of buying two guitars to try different setups out, he's right. like, oh, I'll, I want to try a different kind of neck. I'll just buy a different neck and swap it out. Oh, I want to try different pickups. I'll just swap out a completely different right. pickguard. Uh, the tuner thing throws me off. Yeah. That makes it hard to swap necks. But it's an just inter- swap the tuners too while you're at it. Yeah, because that's fun and easy. Tuners are the hardest thing to screw and unscrew with those tiny little screws. You just need a tiny little screwdriver. 
Ah, it's the worst. I hate tuners. I hate it, Steve. All right, so what do you think? I, you know, it's neat. That I think his value the, ideas are all over the map here. Yeah, I th- well, you know, current value on a Mexican, a new one is uh, is uh, $600, right? This amp, this amp new is maybe $100, so that's $700. They don't sell that amp new. They don't. They don't. It doesn't exist. When that amp was brand new, it they was still a- sold it used. Oh, <laughs> Um, the maple neck is, uh, maybe another $200, $150. No, I'm saying new. Oh, new. I'm saying new, new, new. So we'll say, uh, we'll say 200 new just to keep it easy. So we're already at $900 loaded pit guard, easily $150. Uh, so that's, uh, 1050. I'm already there. 1050. Yeah. I don't think the new price is off. You th- you don't think this is worth five seventy five? That's what you're saying. I don't think this is worth five seventy five for the trouble it's going to cause you. Sure, I think if you were sl- if you were savvy and you took your time, you could flip this. Sure, but it'd be more trouble than it's worth. I think this is for for five hundred even. This is tempting. Sure, because sure. then you're getting a guitar. A couple parts you can swap in and out and see if you like them and then mm-hmm. sell off the extra. Yeah. I mean, that that amp is just giveaway bait. Like, you add that yeah. with a thing. Yeah. I'm sure that's what he's doing. That, there's no way that was his main amp. He's not selling his full rig here. Yeah. He's like, I got to get rid of this crate. I'll throw it in with this bundle well, here. Well, I mean, let's think about it this way. So, say you're pushing. You're, you're pushing for your maximum used value. If you can sell that guitar, let's say, guitar for 350 Pit guard, I don't know, seventy five bucks. Hundred, you think you could get a hundred bucks for a pit guard loaded with Fender Noiseless? Yeah, probably. So you're at four fifty. You could do the neck probably a hundred bucks, depending on the make of the neck. A hundred, hundred twenty, something like that. Um, we'll say a hundred. Well, it doesn't have tuners, so let's say a hundred. Um, so that puts you at five fifty. You could probably get fifty bucks. 30 bucks for that amp yeah but the problem 580. is but then you buy this and then you're you're doing the work to part this right, out for this guy right. so you're saying that he should he should get be giving you a bundle discount absolutely that's i think i think 500 475 that's an exciting price to get this thing to move okay i don't disagree i think that's fair but it's an interesting concept to pick up all these parts at the same time i think if the 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 other neck had tuners on it, it would be much more tempting yeah uh, yeah. The lack of tuners is just a pain in the ass, in my opinion. Well, right, especially when it's being advertised as like, oh, you just swap it. Yeah, like, you no, can't. I, yeah, you can't hot swap it. You're gonna have to take the time to to do the tuners, or you're gonna have to spend another fifty bucks on tuners. How much yeah. are tuners? Is fifty bucks good? That sounds about right. All right. I bet you can get them get cheap ones for thirty. I bet you can get expensive ones for a hundred something. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Who cares? Sounds so right. perturbed. Uh, I think I'm just. What? I think I'm just done with this Ever. day in general. Just it's so hot and sticky all day. All week it's been hot and sticky. I intended to go surfing this morning and it didn't happen. So just been a little grumpy today, Steve. You ever feel that way when you don't get to go surfing? <laughs> uh, no, I'm okay. All right, well, let's wrap this up. Tell us about the song, Steve. Uh, no, I want to tell you about our sponsor, Sinusoid.com. Oh, yeah. uh, they make cables. And smiles. And if you need a top of the line instrument cable, head on over to sinusoid.com. Check them out. Now we will talk about the song. If you need a garbage cable, don't yeah. even think about buying from Sinusoid because they won't sell it to you. Buy from someone else. All right. Uh, this song was sent in by Josh Bailey. Uh, the band is called As of Late. And uh, the song is called Defines You. Hope you love it. Later, guys. Bye.
place Throw yourself from the back of A moving train From the friends that you made And start the long